this type of technology in, in practice, it really demonstrates that there's not a more exciting time to be in the industries that we're in right now. And, and for me particularly, it's never been a more exciting time in supply chain. Look at technology, IoT, machine learning, blockchain. We're only at the beginning of what's going to happen in the digital supply network. And I think it's unimaginable what could be happening next. Kevin, what do you think? Well, I think it's interesting. Uh, you said something earlier today, Cindy. Uh, you talked about 98% of the manufacturing and supply chain organizations out there uh, know that they need to have a digital supply chain, but only 28% are doing anything about it. And that, coupled with some of the things that you just heard us talk about, blockchain and some other technologies, I think is really pushing that uh, envelope a little further. And, and I'm, I think that we're going to start to see more emphasis on this. Uh, as you'll also hear from some of our speakers that are come up here in the session. So one of the things that we find, and I'm sure most of you see a lot of times too in your organizations, is when we talk about supply chain, there's this traditional mindset that it's this linear process. We start here, maybe at step A, and we end over here at step D, and everything comes in, in a line. Well, the problem with that is when something goes wrong, it has a huge ripple effect in what we're doing. And that ripple effect can cause not just cost concerns, but also production and everything else that goes along with that. So we find that a lot of that changes. And we look at ways to do that differently, right, Cindy? Exactly. And today, one of the speakers on the panel about managing and capitalizing on disruption talked about the fact that we used to, you know, demand used to go to the supply. And now supply has to figure out how to go to the demand. And I think it was a great way to introduce that the supply network and the reality that we're in today is much more complicated than it's ever been, um, and that we have to approach it and apply technology and, and new thinking and spatial thinking to that. Because it's not only complex, but it is digi digital and physical now. And how do you manage that in one organization? But you also have to operate globally and locally, right? You need to know everything that's happening within the, the supply network, but at the same time, you need to be able to drill down to even the most granular item that's in your network at any given time. And it was perfect segue to what you were just talking about with blockchain, Kevin. It's internal and external, right? Our speakers today come from one of the world's most renowned logistics and delivery services company, come from one of our most um, known brands of an automotive manufacturer, and then also from the port of Rotterdam, right? Uh, all essentially part of the supply chain, but they're all having to interact and keep that internal and external perspective to everything that they do. So to move us forward, you were introduced to the wheel today. That's how we've affectionately called it. And as we think about organizing our solutions and our capabilities in ways that businesses can take the most advantage of them, we all think about our solutions in this way. And I'll start with strategic planning. It's really the ability to design what I always think of as the best performing network. Right? We can go off and do things and respond to things ad hoc, but we're really trying to get the best. So this is you know, around providing that global operating picture. You might think about it as a supply chain viewer. Right? What is our supplier risk and analysis? And then you move into then the, the kind of day-to-day -day operational aspect of you know, kind of delivering on your supply chain, operating and visualizing those global and regional networks. It might be real estate management, network analysis, product tracing. You know, keeping track of that immutable, uh, transparent uh, <laughs> blockchain. And then finally, the day-to-day, real-time um, operational awareness. You know, asset tracking and alerting, SLA monitoring and risk kind of mitigation. And finally, that reporting back. How is my supply chain doing? How are we performing against our SLAs and against the demand that the market is putting in front of us now? And I think of that as reporting in dashboards. And with that, we get to see some more cool tech, Kevin, and I'll, I'll turn over the screen to you. OK. So uh, we've got just a couple of samples that we wanted to run through real quick. One of the first things we're going to show you here is, is what we call just an explorer. right? And this is where we have a lot of data. And it's not just data about our plants and our suppliers and those types of things, right? but it's information that we're capturing from that uh, from other sources as well. It may be retail locations. It could be hurricanes and earthquakes and all these types of things, right? And we want to bring all those together because we want to put them in that spatial context. And we want to use them together so that we can understand the impacts of things on, on us and on our operations. And of course, you know, we can always aggregate information and we can create dashboards out of these types of things, right? So we can look at what ha is happening with our plants or our suppliers or even retail locations, right? 
and we can zoom in and we can take a look at uh, some particular data sets that have impact on a, data, on, on a retail location or a service location. So we can actually see a service area associated with that. So that could be something where I'm, I'm servicing my products or where I'm creating a trade area that people can come and, and get service from my organization. So that's one quick example. Another one is something we call a performance dashboard. And in this particular one, we're looking at uh, KPIs, right? So key performance indicators that we want to bring together and we want to understand how our supply chain is actually performing. And you can see the little uh, charts at the bottom there and they change based on what we're seeing on the screen. But this is our ability to start to take a look at how our suppliers are performing within those specific categories. And as I zoom into one and I take a look at one in particular, you can see you know, this might be one that's not performing as well. And I can take a look and, and potentially see what's happening there based on my, my uh, speedometers there and understand uh, what particular attribute I should be taking a look at. So the last one I want to show you real quick is, is a quick little application uh, that deals with uh, risk. And uh, in this one, we have our plants and all our facilities, but we also have uh, the different risk type of data that's coming in. And we have a hurricane here uh, over in the Far East, and uh, I've identified a, a particular supplier that might be in, in trouble in that hurricane, and I looked at what kind of products they're supplying. And I can very easily take a look at that uh, supplier now and understand who he's supplying and the products he's supplying so that I can do the analysis I need to do to understand what may or may not be impacted from my manufacturing um, production facilities. Thank you.